Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam decrees, no child is born except on the fitrah and in the purest form, and then his parents make him Jewish, Christian, or Zoroastrian. This hadith was reported by Al Bukhari and Muslim. The aforesaid proverb means that all children born into this world not only do not know anything, but also they do not know how to differentiate between good and bad, or rather between goodness and badness. As such, their parents are responsible in molding the characteristics or personalities of their children. In fact, parents have been entrusted to design the characteristics of their children. They should also carry out this responsibility as best as possible. Do not ever run away to other people from the aforesaid responsibility. Do not also waste the invaluable gift from the Almighty Allah. Through the best exemplar is our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. With accomplished religious education given by parents, thus born a pious, faithful and sincere children who are capable of making their parents famous and renowned in this world and in the hereafter. Hence, the life of a youngster named Ahmad Amar bin Ahmad Azam, 20 years of age. He is Ahmad Amar bin Ahmad Azam. He was born on the 15th of February, 1993. He was brought up in a very big family, comprising relatives of three generations for 12 years in the same house. He lived with his parents, grandparents, uncles, and aunties. However, his parents did not pass over the responsibilities fully to his grandparents because his father and mother gave him so much religious education during his primary and secondary schools until he managed to further studies at the Royal Military College, RMC, in Sumabasi, Kuala Lumpur. Ahmad Amar was awarded second best student in SPM 2010 at RMC, achieving 9A plus and 1A. He then decided to take up Uthmania history course, furthering his studies in Turkey, a country always being looked down cynically by the West. Nevertheless, who on earth might think that Students like Amar chose to continue his studies in Uthmania history. Historically, 600 years ago, Turkey had ever been the most powerful Muslim empire in the Muslim world, and no other powers could challenge its power, and the world really saluted and respected Turkey highly. In the year 1453, the Osmania Turkish government achieved the greatest victory when it conquered Constantinople, which was then renamed as Istanbul. In fact, the victory of the Turkish Osmania government was also backed by its powerful army. They also possessed a reliable and loyal navy and were fully prepared to carry out its responsibility and was on guard in Southeast War. Unfortunately, the glory and victory of Turkish Empire finally deteriorated and fell due to its internal and external factors which put terrible pressure to Uthmania Turkish government. The downfall of the empire had in fact left a bad effect towards Muslim countries till today. Nevertheless, its downfall too made the Muslim people aware of the responsibility that they should carry out to spread Islam. With the sense of responsibility towards the Muslim community, 
it has become his vision and mission to really further studies by making research and by mastering again Turkey Islamic history and learn Turkish language. This is because some of the facts of Islamic history had been diverted and manipulated by the West. Consequently, its originality disappears. Ahmad Amar was ambitious to become a foreign historian by making research on the history of Islamic civilization in order to preach Islam worldwide. Knowledge of religion and spirituality become his main guidelines and basis to ensure that he got a peaceful mind and was always close to God. Since February 2011, Ahmad Amar studied at Madrasa Herat in Al-Quran translation Rizal Unknown and learned Turkish language by studying Jawi Osmani. In October 2011, Amar continued his studies in Turkish language at Ankara University, Turkey. And in September 2012, he furthered his studies at History Department in Marmara University, Istanbul. He was there for two years and he was one of the best students at the History Department. Nevertheless, on the 2nd of November 2013, unexpectedly, Ahmad Amar passed away after he was knocked down by an ambulance while he was crossing the road at Istanbul at 7.30 p.m. Malaysian time. experienced various feelings in him as soon as somebody informed him that his only son was involved in an accident and passed away. When uh, we received the news of the death of Amar, uh, our first reaction, uh, it was a shock to us. Uh, Abah kata, uh, you have to be very strong. We received uh, a call from Turkey saying that Amar had an accident Dilanggar ambulance. Uh, we don't know how to react. Uh, we don't know what to expect because it was a uh, very traumatic news. Uh, in fact, it is uh, a kind of a tragedy to our family. Tak tahu nak cakap, dah tak tahu mungkin dah kosong. Tak tahu apa yang dia rasai. Sekut macam hati tu dilentap lah masa tu kan. Jadi tak ada perasaan masa tu. Pasti dah meninggal lah semua. Tak kira. Saya tak percaya. Tapi sebab uh, this was this is the first time that it is happening to our family. Cuma masa tu bila abah kata I'm going there tomorrow morning, I'm going flying tomorrow morning. Jadi saya cuma kata okay, can I just follow you? Nevertheless, as soon as Haji Ahmad Azam arrived at Istanbul, he was thankful to Almighty Allah because there were so many teachers, ustas and his son's campus mates from Malaysia and Turkey who paid the last respect towards his son. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, when we reached uh, the Istanbul airport, uh, we were quite consoled by what we call by the reception and, and, and they have shown their great uh, sympathy and offered their condolences to us, uh, to both of us when we were at the airport. And then we were brought to the, uh, what we call, uh, to see Amar body uh, in the mock over there. And, uh, and then we were at peace when we saw uh, he was uh, just like sleeping uh, and, and there was no major uh, fracture uh, in his body. And, and we were quite contented with that and then when we, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, Amar uh, is in one piece even though he has passed away. Ahmad Azam did not expect that his son was so highly respectable when his application to bury him at Ayub Sultan graveyard was approved by the Turkish government. 
when uh, we were asked by the Malaysian uh, embassy whether uh, to bring Amar back home uh, or, or what is your decision as a father, uh, I told uh, the embassy staff that uh, I want Amar to be buried uh, in Istanbul because uh, it, uh, Istanbul was the reason or Turkey was the reason why he was sent to study and I requested uh, Jama Khairat, uh, the organization where Amar uh, lived and stayed and studied Al Quran, uh, that I request to be buried in either in uh, Fatih Cemetery or Abu uh, Ayub uh, Ayub Sultan Cemetery. But I make this request uh, to uh, Brother Ali Kud, uh, the Secretary Secretary General of the Union of, of NGO of Islamic World. He said he will try because it is a very tall order. <laughs> and he tried and by the will of Allah, uh, it was granted uh, for the 20-year-old uh, boy who have not even completed his study, who have no history at all uh, in terms of contribution towards Turkey being allowed to be buried over there. So I would say that it is uh, the will of Allah. This is the way of Allah uh, showing uh, his greatness that he can do whatever he like and I thank Allah uh, for uh, what we call allowing uh, reason uh, to be given that Amar being uh, buried uh, in Ab Ayub Sultan Cemetery. The news of Amar's demise became the phenomenon of young people's conversation. Since he became the first Malaysian to be buried at Ayub Sultan Bolivia, which makes the world look upon Malaysia so highly and with full respect because the Turkish community considered that any outsiders who are being buried there are special people. When he was alive, he was quite unknown, but after his death, it triggered a new phenomenon in mass media and universe. So much so that the whole world knows who he is. Ahmad Amar was buried at Ayub Sultan Kami Gravia, facing Golden Horn Sea. It was here that the Holy Prophet Sahaba, holy men, Uthmania commanders and Turkey outstanding personalities were buried as well. That made Ahmad Amar so special in his own history. His death was connected to Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, who took part in a crusade together with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When uh, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, performing hijrah, when he reached Medina, uh, it was the house of Abu Ayyub that has been chosen by Allah, where the Prophet used to stay for more than seven months in his house. And Abu Ayyub was chosen uh, by Allah for as a place to be the host of our Prophet, our beloved Prophet, is because of his sincerity in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, Abu Ayyub, uh, he has a long life. Uh, he lived during uh, the era of uh, Muawiyah with Abu Sufyan becoming the Caliph. And uh, Muawiyah uh, assembled an army to attack Constantinople, uh, whereby this is the center of the Roman Empire. And uh, Abu Ayyub, uh, at the age of more than uh, reaching 90 years old, he, he went into this war, and uh, and he was shahid in, in this war in Istanbul. And he gave a wasiya that, uh, please, when I died, Please bury me in the furthest area, acres of land that uh, we have made, we managed to conquer. So Abu Ayyub was uh, granted shahid by Allah Ta'ala and he was buried wherever, 
when when uh, the, the the furthest uh, land that uh, the Muslim army managed to conquer Istanbul. So this is that was where Abu Ayyub was buried, together with more than sixty of Sahaba who was shahid at the time. <laughs> was an ex-president of Malaysian Islamic Youth Front, Amin Noitan. It has been fated that his son, after involving in an accident, passed away. While he was on the way to teach Tafsir Rizal Unknown, he was made to understand that his son had already crossed the road, but he lost balance and collapsed. <laughs> No blood was found on his son's attire after he was knocked down by the ambulance. After autopsy had been carried out by a doctor to determine the cause of his death, the doctor found that his left hand and ribs fractured besides internal injury. His father found the Quran Tafsir book in which the title of the first chapter was Sincerity. Only when one is sincere, Almighty Allah will reward one for good works. Otherwise, no reward will be given. Apparently, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had glorified him because of his sincerity. Till today, his death is still being felt. There is something special in him that made him highly respectable so much so that many people wanted to carry up his corpse towards his graveyard. A famous preacher in Turkey was reported to have said that Amar had been blessed and glorified by Allah the Almighty, and his demise is in the category of Shahid. He says, I cannot say it. And then, and they later learn that he didn't die, actually, and he was in the exile. He was uh, present uh, in the Greece. This is the story of the ulama-ulama yang datang. Jadi itu sebab bila video ni menyentuh perasaan semua orang, saya pun tak boleh nak faham. Macam mana boleh menyentuh hal itu? Other famous preacher said, made Amar's parents ask their own selves about the greatness of their son until Amar's death was considered as Shahid. Moreover, it could be seen that there was sprinkling of sweat on Amar's forehead and under his eyelid when the corpse was shrouded. That too was one of the omens that his demise was a blessed one. The question was finally answered when Amar's friend informed Amar's father that his son had completed Quran translation studies with Salam and Noor within eight months. This translation was established by Ustaz Bediu Zaman Said Nusi. It was tough, and even the Turkish people took a very long time to accomplish it. Amar's father, Haji Ahmad Azam, described Amar's attitude as extraordinary because his son was not like that before this. Nevertheless, he has never thought that it would become a memory for his own family. According to late Amar's mother, Nur Azlina, his son had a chance to visit their relatives and his friends when he came back to Malaysia for two months during Ramadan, as if he wanted to say goodbye to his family and others. It is said that he was much involved in Cambodia humanitarian mission activity, going here refugees, and so on and so forth. When Amar was here, this is the was the first field he worked on. Now the paddy is ready to be harvested, maybe in three weeks time. Now, what do you see at here? This from Amar. Hands. Amar very very light because 
we're looking at this fountain because this fountain will never use farm at all electricity because this one we use only gravity this is the spot point to Amma enjoy with the children so one of the children will recruit the Amma younger son the name for my younger son also Amma Junior they call Amma Junior Uh, Amma mempercayai seorang pelajar yang sangat uh, berbudi bahasa, berhemah tinggi, menghormati orang tua dan sangat-sangat rajin. Ramai-ramai sekali, dia nak ada yang menunjuk orang Saya ingin 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 saya During the last time his family met him, that is when she accompanied her late son to the airport on the 22nd of September 2013, exactly 40 days before he passed away. His last words uttered were, After this, I may not return. But there was nothing obvious that he mentioned. Two weeks before Ahmad Amar passed away, Ahmad Azam met his son Amar when he made an official visit to Istanbul. Nevertheless, Amar did not tell his father that he participated humanitarian mission at Syria. Before taking part in humanitarian mission in Syria, Amar did mention about his intention to get married. Saya mendapat makluman daripada kawan-kawan bahawa Amar dah sebut tentang ini mendirikan rumah tangga. Uh, dan uh, saya rasa uh, impian itu terlalu lebih lebih lagi uh, terkesan dan sebagainya men, ataupun terdesak apabila dia pergi ke Syria. Peristiwa di Syria melaporkan dia akan saya ingat dalam namanya yang mana Allah ya ham jadi beliau ingin syahid di sana. When he put a knife at the hospital ward in Syria, he heard a terrific sound of bomb explosion. Consequently. Amar's friend rated that Amar dreamt meeting a Bidadari, there is an angel from the paradise. He said, Praises be to Allah. God has rewarded me with a Bidadari. I have died. I have got shahid. I am not patient enough to meet my Bidadari. Amar's death brought about the realization to many people, especially young people who like to die as a martyr, like Amar. He is leader, a leader which he can lead us and which he can lead the Islamic nation. Now, we are going to focus on what we are doing. Yeah, but they have done stages in their career. Bila kita jadi pemerasan, kita kena ikut disiplin. Dia amat sedang berhati-hati. Orang ini sangat berawat. Berkongsi dengan orang ramai tentang apa yang dia belajar. Dan apabila dia kongsikan itu, kita nampak kesungguhannya. Dia akan menguruskan urusan solat makhluk dulu sama kelas. Kematangan, kebijaksanaan dan keterangan beliau terus saya rasai sampai ke hari. On the whole, there were three important values in Amal's personality which could stimulate encouragement to youngsters. That is, his sincerity in doing work, put heart and soul into whatever work we are doing, and the preparedness to help people. To commemorate Amal's good deeds. Apart from that, the Turkish people requested Amal's parents to leave all Amal's belongings at the university. His books too were kept in the library, and Amal's attire too were donated to the Turkish community as a memory for his jihad. In conjunction with Monidu Rasul's celebration, 
every followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam should experience and appreciate the Prophet's strive in his jihad to teach and propagate Islamic knowledge. He was willing to leave his country to do good works and charity besides his good relationship with Almighty Allah and among human beings. Therefore, we should follow him even though if one is still young because Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is the best exemplar forever. Finally, we hope that the disappearance of this glittering gem from this world would be a trigger to youngsters and community to strive towards the path of Allah the Almighty. Late Ahmad Amar Ahmad Azam merely left knowledge, advice and enthusiasm for us. May Almighty Allah bless him forever.